Hello, everyone. I'm Elias Verev. I know everything about OpenStreetMap. I like to map it. And I really care about shops and amenities in OpenStreetMap, which is a bit unfortunate because, well, OpenStreetMap has very few of these. It's uh, like, I don't use OpenStreetMap for like searching for nearest H&M store or, I don't know, coffee shop. I open Google Maps. And uh, that's the common sentiment. Like when you need POI, even commercial companies, they just uh, turn to commercial data sources because it's much simpler. When I was working for a big American, American company to assess the quality of multiple POI data sets, well, the state of OpenStreetMap was obvious from the beginning. Like, in the United States, it has only half a million POI. In comparison, all commercial data stores have 40 million, 80 times more. That fact alone was pretty decisive. So, yeah, we paid for commercial data and so on. But, uh, and even if you close your eyes at uh, quantity, using commercial, uh, well, commercial data is basically a simple table. Each row has all the data for points of interest you need. Type, name, uh, measure of existence, when it was surveyed, uh, open hours, addresses from house number to country, everything. Very simple to use. With OpenStreetMap, not so much. With OpenStreetMap, you got tags. Uh, data model it has been evolved over 18 years with uh, thousands of people contributing it, and you can imagine what happens. Like, uh, of course, there are some obvious tags, like name. Actually, no, but kind of. There are uh, types, which are kind of simple, but no. There are open hours, which are documented, but not easy to parse, but still. <laughs> and uh, there are ambiguous tags, like for floor in a shopping mall, we got like three different tags with different semantics, and you're not like promised any. And uh, like for payment types and fill types, you have to like collect many tags into one single attribute again. And addresses, Addresses are hard, which I guess Sarah Hoffman can tell you in her presentation. Uh, there are so many tags, and every country has their own different ideas on addressing. Like, you can't compare how buildings are addressed in the United States, in, I don't know, Czechia, in uh, Japan, uh, in Africa. <laughs> and more than that, in OpenStreetMap, in the United States, only half of POI have addresses on objects themselves. Many mappers consider that you should get address for, for a shop from geometry, like from enclosing building or somehow reverse geocoded. And as a person who has written, like, I think the best reverse geocoder for OpenStreetMap, reverse geocoding is awfully hard. Like, you shouldn't make anybody do that, especially when they just need to know the address of a shop. So, yeah, commercial data source. <laughs> but I care about OpenStreetMap. What can I do? Can I somehow fix this? Well, I, I could try fix at least the quantity problem. Like, I can just take my camera, and go outside, which I did like 10 years ago. And I spent the entire day making photos of every shop, you know, the old way. And then came back and opened OpenStreetMap Editor and was typing all the collected data for four days, morning to evening. And yeah, OpenStreetMap got like uh, 700 shops richer. But uh, like uh, everything hurt it, like <laughs> my feet, my hands, 
never again have I repeated this experience because it's very hard. All these shops are obsolete now. It was 10 years ago. Nobody like updates them. And I did that pretty like interesting experience. And I was like highly motivated because I care about OpenStreetMap. People usually need some external motivation, like money. Does OpenStreetMap have money? No. Uh, but there are commercial companies, some that also care about points of interest, like street cred. They paid money to people. Uh, well, not directly paid, they organize sort of competitions. Who can collect the most points of interest in some enclosed area in a big city like New York? Uh, they used a uh, simple like, uh, field collection app, kind of Next.js collector or QField or ODK, you know the type. Like when you prepare the form, spread it to apps, and then give the app to people, and they collect it to a central server. Kind of like that, except more flashy, because it was about the money, and you can't trust people you pay money to. <laughs> uh, so you have to double check everything and collect as many info as you could, including photos. Validation was very hard, but it worked. They collected like 10,000 shops, which is impressive, all obsolete now because it was very long ago. Uh, but I don't know, the data model, it just, there were not too many customers, the companies did now. Uh, and there are no alternatives, sorry. So what do we do? <laughs> uh, maybe, um, I still care. <laughs> And um, maybe I can figure this some other way. Maybe it's not about quantity, but about quality. Like maybe uh, as a developer, I could invent some tools that make this whole process simpler because we can't rely on paid people. There is no money in OpenStreetMap. We have to rely on the biggest strength OpenStreetMap has. It's million of volunteer mappers. And for that, to make their lives easier, to not make their feet and head hurt, we need to maybe make it simpler. I tested this tool theory a year and a half ago, like privately, not in OpenStreetMap. I collected, uh, like in my very small area with lots of shopping malls, half a thousand shops in uh, like two weeks on and off using just a Telegram bot. It's in Russian, sorry. Uh, this is the bot for searching, you know the type. But the idea is that I didn't use any external, external tool. I just opened my messenger. Telegram is a messenger. It doesn't have anything besides like buttons and messages. No interactive maps, no nothing. And collecting half a thousand points was a breeze. I really liked the experience. I thought I was onto something. How did I do that? Well, two things. First, Telegram doesn't have interactive maps. Turns out this was really helpful because we as a mappers are easily distracted by the promise of interactive maps. They are really easy to make and they have everything and they're fine, fun to navigate except they don't help with like work. <laughs> uh, interactive maps for editing has very, quite a few drawbacks. Like for example, they distract you by having to scroll and zoom the map like instead of editing. Uh, you can't see all the shops because there are too many in one point and there's la label and icon displacement that just don't, doesn't allow you to see them. And there's basically for each shop, they're just icon and label, so you can't print all the information you need. It is hard to use interactive editors. And I did away with that. You know, when you don't have a map, you can have just a list. And lists are great. Like, uh, 
I just saw shops around me in a list, filtered by floor and address, of course, and it was really simple. I look at a list, I look around and compare, and I immediately see what's missing, what's extra, what has changed. It got pretty fast. And in the list, you are not limited by an icon and a label. You can print any info you want, like open hours and phone, so you don't have to tap anything. You just immediately saw whether they have changed. Try like removing interactive maps from your project. It may boost user productivity. The second thing Telegram bot was great at is custom data model. I use my own database. I uh, chose what fields I want uh, to be searched and to be stored, like, I don't know, photos inside and outside, keywords for searching, uh, different links, uh, like location and so on. Not like serious fields, but really helpful. I really benefited from this being my own database, not OpenStreetMap. So after I presented this Telegram bot on FOSDEM and somewhere else, I got tons of questions. Are you planning to import this to OpenStreetMap? Uh, why not use OpenStreetMap in the first place? Maybe you could make OpenStreetMap editor as a Telegram bot. And just no. Why not use OpenStreetMap? Custom data model. It's like completely different. I don't want to deal with 18 years of tagging schemas in OpenStreetMap except I care about OpenStreetMap. So that's got me thinking and presenting my ideas and like opening the editor, learning mobile development, because why not make open a mobile app for, to make people's life easier? And last week I published the Everydoor Editor, which is a mobile app with basically the same principles but for OpenStreetMap that like fixes all the issues we have with collecting POI data. And it's been like a blast. Since this March, I have been going out and mapping every shop I could find in my area and coming home and finding something to improve in the editor to remove slowness, to make it more robust, more quick to collect. Like, this is a product of like half a year of constant mapping and making the process more effective. It's no longer like field data collection app. It's like this juggernaut that will destroy everything. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and uh, at one time I went to the second largest shopping mall in Estonia with 150 shops. I surveyed them in two and a half hours basically a shop a minute. And this might sound a lot, but it's not just names and types as usual in OpenStreetMap, no, open hours. There's also, I don't know, wheelchair accessibility, uh, whether you can pay by card, and uh, uh, phones, links, operator names, everything you, you can find in a serious data source. Every one of these 150 shops now has the full set of data collected in only two and a half hours. What enables it is that you don't see OpenStreetMap data model here. No tags, nothing complex. And also it subtly changes the perceived priority of, of the tags. Like uh, the address is actually the second after the name. So you're like, inclined to just tab an address and set it directly to point of interest, so no reverse geocoding finally. And multiple tags are just conflated into one, like uh, Wi-Fi access, that's actually two tags in one button. And uh, payment types, that's actually three tags in one button. Yeah, processing is not simple, but now it's documented. Now you can have the data set of the same quality as commercial one from OpenStreetMap. And everything is optimized. Open hours. Open hours mod model in OpenStreetMap 
is very powerful. Nothing you can find in commercial alternatives. Like uh, you can s specify like how the venue works on first Thursday of the month or on December 24th. It's pretty simple. And the editor doesn't make you type like Monday, Friday, one, zero, no. Tap, 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 you're set, next job. Very fast. And finally, the date of serving. In OpenStreetMap now, you don't get when the shop was like last seen in OpenStreetMap. You have, all you have is date of last change. And that can be like anything. That can be like a reversion of malicious edits. <laughs> this can be some bot, like adding some useless tag. Now, this editor puts survey date on the forefront in these check marks. You go in the shop, uh, near the shop, you see it's still there. Nothing has changed, but it's still there. You just tap a check mark, and everybody in OpenStreetMap knows that you have seen it. It's still there. It works. It can be used. I went back to that shopping mall with uh, 150 shops, and I confirmed every shop several months later and added some new ones and removed some obsolete in just half an hour. Everything is made very fast. In the past half a year, when the app was beta testing, uh, 700 mappers made 100,000 changes. Roughly half of them was, were shops. Now, imagine what will happen, like I published this app last week, and what will happen when tens of thousands of mappers from OpenStreetMap get their hands on it, and they will start walking all around the world, adding millions and millions of shops and amenities they see, because it's so fun and easy. I just can't get my hands off the app, and I'm pretty sure other people too. The state of points in, of interest in state of, in OpenStreetMap. It will be like on a completely different level. This changes how we map OpenStreetMap. This changes how we perceive OpenStreetMap as a data source. The choice between commercial data and OpenStreetMap will not be that obvious in like three to five years. And obviously, that would put like many companies that fare by collecting POI data out of business. OpenStreetMap was made to disrupt geospatial companies, and it doesn't stop at roads and buildings. It will continue like eat all of the areas that uh, data companies profit from, <laughs> including right now POIs, but more things later. So to stay in business, you obviously need to know how to work with POI. Like we do in, well, in our company, we know everything about POI, we can do it. But you will have to learn how to live with OpenStreetMap too. So sorry about that, and thank you. <laughs>